Welcome, welcome, my friends, to an exploration of the area of a trapezoid. Yeah, it's sort of hard to make with my hands, so... Trapezoid! Pretty cool, huh? Take a look, we've got some trapezoids here. Well, let's talk about the trapezoid. You know, you probably just came from a lesson about the parts of the trapezoid, at least a review, right? So we know all those parts, so let's talk about them. For example, trapezoids have two bases, don't they? And what is that difference? One's pretty big, and one's a bit smaller. And remember, we have two names for those bases. There is the minor base, which we'll use a lowercase b for, and the major base, which we'll use a capital B for. It's pretty nice. You know, we also have the height, which is right there. How high is the trapezoid? Hmm, almost looks like a plateau. Well, hmm, you know, the perimeter goes around, and uh, we've got those oblique sides, but for now, let's take these out of here, and let's take a look and make sure that both of these are equivalent, because the magic trick, well, just won't have as much power if you don't believe that these are equivalent. We'll take this one out and set it aside. And we're going to move all these over to their new home. Make sure they fit nice and snug so you believe there is equivalence here. Whoops. Well, it fits in nice and snug there. Let's try this one in here. Fantastic. So we have these two equivalent shapes. So you may notice there's another shape here. Because when we're finding the area of something, we turn it into a rectangle. That's just sort of what we do, right? And we're pretty good at it. I'm going to put those labels right back, and then I want you to watch closely and see what happens. Minor base, major base, height. But the height's got to move so I can actually get this moving. I'm going to take it piece by piece and move it. And if you have a copy of this to follow along with, go ahead and try this out. Ta-da! It fits! And then finding the area of this would be pretty easy, right? Now we can just do that whole base times height, multiply them, and uh, yeah, we should get the area pretty easily of that trapezoid. But this wouldn't just work like that. If we use the base and height of this trapezoid, that just wouldn't compute. So let's go back to that trapezoid and see where each of these parts of the rectangle came from. Here's our major base. Here's our minor base. There's our height. So here goes our major base, and we'll put it down over here so we can see the major bases there. What just happened to the height right there? How much of the height is left? Snip, 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 snip. Half of the height. Half of the height. This height right here is half of the height of the trapezoid. Hmm. Well, let's see where that minor base goes. We'll put that piece over there. We'll put that piece right there. And we'll take our minor base and put it right there. So that entire base right there is the sum of what? Major base and minor base. Pretty cool. Do you think that we can create a formula out of all this? Of course we can. What is area equal to? Now, we would do base times height of a rectangle. Our base in this case is major base plus minor base. Let's put that in parentheses so we know we have to get that first. And then we multiply it by the height. The height of a trapezoid is cut in half to make this rectangle. So we have this equation right here. Area equals major base plus minor base, and all of that multiplied by the height, which is taken by half. 
How cool is that? Well, cool enough to write this down and then go back to your trapezoid diagram, the parts of the trapezoid, right? And measure the area of that trapezoid. Or there's probably plenty of trapezoids around your house, right? Why don't you measure one of those and find the area? And then you can show your friends and your friends can show their friends. Just don't fall into the trap of the trapezoid. It's pretty cool. All right, friends, I'll see you again soon.